Hey, God bless you, my friends. This is Sister Sharon, and today, quickly, I want to give you eight things to look for because we do have a surge of many new prophets and prophetess all throughout um, this platform here, um, YouTube. And for a foundational text, I want us to understand what Ephesians chapter 4 tells us that Jesus, before he ascended, and I'm going to continue to remind you of this scripture because it is it is clear in scripture that before Jesus ascended and sat at the right hand of God, he gave gifts unto men for the perfecting of the saints of God, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And let us focus here about the office of a prophet. One of the most dangerous things for a prophet, especially one who, you know, I, I, I laugh because some some of them think they're so grown up. They they think they're so grown and, and they're nothing but kids that that we, you remember how we would try on our mom's shoes and walk through the house in her shoes thinking we grown we would put on her shoes her clothes a lot of them are doing nothing but dressing up and playing around but you can't tell them that they're babies they think they are so deep and profound and one of the seductions of a prophet please hear me because these gifts are clearly listed in scripture these gifts are bona fide gifts um, it, it, and, and one is that of a prophet, one who comes to speak the mind of God, which is not, it's not a new revelation because the revealing of Jesus, we find it in the book of Revelation, John on the Isle of Patmos, he was there, he was exiled there because he, like the other disciples that truly had an encounter with Jesus, wouldn't stop talking about Jesus. So they exiled him to this barren place where he would die. That's what they wanted him to do. Just go there and die. There ain't no vegetation, ain't no food, ain't no crops, ain't nothing going on on the Isle of Patmos. Go away. <laughs> so they exiled John. And so here John is on the Isle of Patmos. He is in the spirit on the Lord's day and the Lord Jesus shows up and he starts giving John a, a revelation of himself and what he felt about what was going on in the seven churches. But it is Jesus that warns us about false prophets. And I want you to be very clear, friends. It's not how we start, it's how we end. It's not the ending. It's, it's not, excuse me, the beginning. It's the ending. We have to endure and all of us are subject to being moved into the wide road of destruction. And I want you to quickly give me your ear as I give you what which I've given many times before. These eight things to look for because when someone has gone the way of the three points, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, if you follow any person, I don't care how deep and prolific, how many demons they cast out, how deep and how profound their prophecies, anybody could get away from Jesus and end up in that wide world of destruction. Yes, yes, and yes. And here is how you they're in plain sight. A lot of these, a lot of them are young men and women. They're, they are toting about a fake Jesus, a fake gospel. And here are the things you look for this in their primary teaching. Prosperity is number one. Everything is about getting more, getting more, getting more. It's all about you. Go get it, go get it. And the reason they're going to encourage you to go get it, go get it, is because these are they that still solicit you to give to God. They always tell you to give to God, but the God that they're talking about is the God that they're really serving, little G, the God of this world. He will give you a return on that money. That's why when they teach prosperity, what they're really doing is summoning summoning you to be about you because as long as you're enamored with prophecy and casting out demons, they will cast you, place you, sub put you in submission, detain you with what? 
that charisma. This is why many people follow false prophets because they are captivated by what they showcase. And that is the things of this world. They, 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 they move you right into desiring more, more, more. And these are they, number two, that showcase their seemingly successful ministries. They will show you their Teslas. They'll show you getting in and out of their Bentleys. They will show you their Louis Vuitton, their Gucci attire. They will showcase and show you their chauffeurs opening the doors for them. They'll show you um, their entourage and, and how they are just, they're rock stars. It, it, for the most part, they're rock stars, brothers and sisters. They have no shame in showcasing their seemingly successful lifestyles. They will show you men walking around with their handbags. They they worse than the women. <laughs> I'm telling you, friends. They're gonna show you. These are they that that they want to tantalize you, and 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 uh, mesmerize you so that you want to become like them. Quote successful. They bait you into the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So these. False prophets, they, they tantalize and mesmerize by the gifts of the Spirit. Don't you ever forget it, friends. This is why if you don't develop a close enough relationship with the Holy Spirit, they can bait you because you're weak. As long as you're weak and you won't go eat, you won't sit at the table, you won't allow Holy Spirit to become your teacher because these false prophets are always toting about how you need to be submitted to someone else to teach you. But Jesus said, you need no man to teach you. The Holy Ghost will teach you. But these false prophets, oh, they're going to make themselves out to be the best thing since sliced bread. Yes, yes, and yes. Number three, God wants you to be happy. God does want you to be happy, happy in the cross, happy in the fact that your sins have been forgiven and you have been given a chance to receive this beautiful gift of salvation and regeneration and allow the atonement of Jesus Christ to bring you to redemption. I'm talking about all the way to the end, my friend. That's God wants you to be happy in that. So they are always promoting how you you should be and, and you will be happy. God wants it for you. You are king's kid. They will always, my friend, showcase. This kind of goes with number two. They will showcase their seemingly wealthy lifestyles on camera. They will do commercials showing you getting into their luxury cars. They'll show you walking in Rodale Drive in these real expensive high-end stores. They will show it to you. With no shame. This is number four. No shame. No shame. These are supposed to be holy men of God. Can you imagine Elijah or Elisha carrying on like this? Can you imagine Isaiah carrying on like this? Can you imagine Elijah, the prophet of God? Can you imagine John the Baptist carrying on like this? Friends, number five. They always, I've said this, it bears repeated. They love to showcase prophecy. That's their trick pony. That's the thing that draw people to these ministries because they are enamored with hearing from God. Hear me very closely, my friends, because these gifts are precious and these gifts are real gifts to speak the mind of God. But I remind you what Jesus said. He said, many will uh, uh, say, um, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? We, we cast out devils. We was prophesying. We was... Ooh, we was doing it. And we know all of us keep hearing this, that Jesus say, Jesus will say, I don't know you depart from me. You got to understand it's not how you begin. It's how you finish this thing. We got to finish what we start with Jesus. We have to finish friends. So when you get uh, caught up in prophecy, casting out demons, Jesus said they're going to be doing this. This is what makes this so dangerous to get caught up in any person that's showcasing this. They're going to put it on camera. This is how they seduce you. This is how they bring you towards their work, friends. They're utilizing the media to showcase themselves as wonders. Number six, no correction. They are not going to correct you. 
They're going to let you keep on keeping on doing what you do. They're not going to confront you, brothers and sisters. This is another reason their ministries will swell up in numbers because there's no pushback from anyone that's not living a righteous life. They do not remind you of the judgment of God. They do not remind you of what Jesus died for. They do not remind you of his sufferings. They do not remind you that the way is straight and narrow and very few shall find it. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the words of the Son of God. These are the words of the Messiah. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus, he told us that we must repent, not them. They're not going to, you'll very seldom ever hear that come out of them. And you can see and tell by the entourage of people that's around them and their ministries. All you got to do is see, them, see it on the camera. You see all that nakedness, they ain't saying nothing because their, their goal now is to break in that money because they're going to teach you to bring and give to God, give to God, give to God, give to God. Oh yes, yes, and yes. And I'm not going to correct you because if I correct you, you go get upset and you go, you go leave. So they are not going to do that friends. Number seven is love, love, love. They're so out of balance, but I want to remind you that Paul said that he was constrained by the love of God. And that love is Jesus Christ on that cross. He was not talking about this, you know, I love you, I love, mm-mm. He was talking about, he was talking about what happened on Mount Golgotha. He was talking about what happened on the day that that veil was rent in the tabernacle from the top to the bottom. That was love. God said, you know what? I'm going to give humanity a chance. I'm going to give them my only begotten son and whosoever shall believe and repent, turn from their sin, believe on him, have faith in his finished work. You shall be saved. You must do your part. They're not going to tell you that part. They only want you to get this, that God love, 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 love. He love you. He love you. He love you. Mm -mm. That's not, that's not the full counsel. He does love you, but he love his son. And Jesus Christ suffered, my friend. So a false prophet, they're not going to remind you of those sufferings. Mm -mm. They're not going to do it. Mm -mm. Because it's all about numbers. It's all about um, fame, the rising of their name, and maintaining their treasures. And they will tell you, I don't need money. I don't need money. I don't need money. Hmm. But they're the same ones that tell you after they preach to give God your best. Who do you think you're giving your best to? You're giving it to him. It, you know what, friends? It's just so, it's trickery and it's in plain sight. Yeah, I don't need no money. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God has blessed me. God has blessed me. But yet, after every sermon, after every meeting in a congregation, the buckets is passed. The, 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 um, what do you call these things? Your, their cash apps, all that's open. And they're telling you, now give your best to God. <laughs> Well, how do they get it to God? Ask, ask, ask these prophets the next time. Well, how are you giving it to God? I'm giving you, I'm giving you this money. Tell me how you give it. How are you going to exchange, give it back to God? Ask them that. What God are they talking about? I'm going to tell you the God they are talking about. They're talking about the God of this world. That's why they can show you their high-end vehicles with no shame. Because that's who they carry in that money that you've given to straight to them gods. That's right, brothers and sisters. We got to wake up. The last but not least, a false prophet, modern day, is always talking about numbers. I'm talking about their people. They are very prideful and they are so so excited to talk about how they reach all these milestones on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, how come on and celebrate with us. We got a hundred thousand new followers. We just hit a million friends. Something is wrong with that picture. I'll tell you what's wrong with that picture. It's called the pride of life. And these are the things that are slippery slopes. They could cause us to open our hearts and minds, friends, to the ways of the world. The Bible says to be friends with the world is to be an enemy of God. And to be a friend of the world is to be an exalter of the pride of your life, the lust of our eyes, lusting of the flesh. So when someone's promoting to you to do as the world, count your numbers and boast and brag and tell you, man, we just hit 500K. Mm -mm. 
He's telling you right there what he's after. He's after the praises, the accolades of men, the exalting of himself. Because Jesus, listen and hear me as I close the exhortation. Please never forget, young prophets. When you really do this thing right, when you really are pressing your way to preach a message of holiness and righteousness, you are going to have enemies. Yes, you are. And I can assure you, you're not going to have a whole bunch of people following you. I don't care how many subscribers, friends. When you look at a global market where YouTube is, these numbers ain't nothing. Nothing. But they will count them. They're proud full of it. We should not be that way. We're here because our Lord put us here. And people going to come. People going to go. And people are like the weather. So, so when they're pushing an, an agenda of weather, people... You best to be careful, my friend. Till next time, a great big God bless you.